Hi, my name is Jasmine Jafar. I am an OnlyFans creator. I'm in the top 0.03% at the moment. And I kind of have a unique background in the sense that I am Middle Eastern and I am a lawyer, which are usually two things you don't see a lot of on OnlyFans, but I absolutely love it. Tell us how you got started on OnlyFans, how you first got the idea. And from my understanding, you had just finished law school. Yeah. So it's not something I ever thought I would be doing. I actually had no social media prior to starting my OnlyFans. I didn't have an Instagram. I didn't have a Twitter. I didn't have anything. And I know that OnlyFans started becoming popular during the pandemic 2020. I didn't start till 2021 when I graduated law school. And I was always just so curious about it. I thought it was really cool that like people could make money this way. But I was always like, well, I can't like great that they can't. I probably right. able to make money. <laughs> And then as I was studying for the bar, I was like, I'm home all the time. What's the harm? Let me just take pictures. I asked one of my friends how she promoted and she said Reddit. And I was like, okay, Reddit seems like it's like discreet. It's not as like popular as, you know, TikTok, Instagram. And I'm like, let me just start one, make a little extra money as I'm studying for the bar. And then obviously I'll just delete everything and then go to (laughs) just stick to being a lawyer. And so I started posting on Reddit and it started picking up. And I was like, I enjoy this. I'm I'm already making pretty good money within a few months of doing it. So I was like, hmm, you know, and so I was like, maybe I can just do both. So for a while, I was having like this double life. I was like at the law firm, like normal business hours and uh-huh. then home and I would film and I spent all my weekends filming. And then finally, I was like, I love this. And one of the reasons I started it, or I, I think even subconsciously is I was like, if I can get out of that nine to five lifestyle. And this was a vehicle for me to be able to do that. And so I'm really happy that I took that risk and did it. But your family is kind of conservative, right? Can you explain a little bit about your background? And then if you did tell your family and how did that go? Um, My parents are both immigrants from Iran. So culturally, they have a much more like conservative culture there. You know, I was a girl, I get in trouble for like wearing shorts. They wouldn't let me wear shorts outside the house. I like wasn't allowed to have a boyfriend until like I was in my 20s. And so this was like a complete shock to them. And they don't even know what only like they don't know that people <laughs> nude pictures on the Internet. I think to this day, they still think that I'm like posting like bikini pictures. They are just unaware of what goes on on the Internet. And I did tell them, I called my mom actually. And I just told her because I hate living with like a secret. And I was so close with my parents. They were like big emotional support for me. They were completely financially supporting me at that time because I was going through school. And, you know, I was like, they're going to find out one day. And I rather have it be on my terms than constantly live with this fear that they're going to find out. So I kind of called my mom and I just told her. Um, I was angry about something else. I think I had all these emotions and I had had like the balls in that moment. So I told her and she was like shocked. She only knew about what he was because the previous year I like told her that one of my friends was on it and she's like, oh my God, that's terrible. You know? And so she was really mad. She didn't talk to me for a really long, for a few months. But what I really didn't want is my dad to know because we're super close. Like I'm such a daddy's girl. Mm -hmm. And after like, okay, I won't tell him not for your sake, but for his. And I'm like, that's cool. I don't care. (laughs) I don't care whose sake. (laughs) Just please don't say anything. And this was all still before my bar exam that my mom knew. So I think my mom was like, okay, for now, focus on your exam. And my dad is very smart and he knows when something's up. And he was visiting me at the time because he was like, while I was studying, he would like bring me fruit bowls and like just taking care of everything. That's sweet. To focus on studying. He's the best. And he just sensed something was off. But I think him too, he was like, I just wanted to focus on the bar exam. And I took the bar exam. And afterwards, I'm like, I just know something. Like, I just know shit is about to explode. And I remember I told him, he's like, how do you think you did? I'm like, I think I did well. Well, he's like, okay, get some rest and we'll talk later. And I was like, oh my God, Like he doesn't say that. So I was like, he knows. And I guess my mom had talked to him and he called me really calmly, which... Like I could now I know they had this like intervention and they told him like what to say because they knew if anyone could convince me out of this, it'd be my dad. And he called me and he's like, you know, this is not what people usually from your background and your position do. You don't need to do this. I don't know where you got this idea in your head, blah, blah, blah. He's like, but if you just stop now, everything's fine. 
and we'll all, we'll all forgive you. It's okay. And everything in me was just like, no. And I never was somebody to like disobey my parents. Like I had done everything mm-hmm. expected of me my whole life, but it was just in that moment. I was like, no, because I just knew if I agree to this now, I'm going to be stuck living a life that they had planned out for me. And I'm just not going to be happy that way. So I was even shocked when I said it, I was like, <laughs> it's just like silent. And then he was really mad. He said, he's not going to talk to me anymore. So neither of them actually talked to me for a while. And then eventually, you know, they came around. And when I got, when I started working at my law firm, they were like, okay, well, you know, you're working at a law firm, just quit the, the whatever you're doing on the side. Uh-huh. And it was kind of like a don't ask, don't tell kind of policy. And it still kind of is to this day, but everything's fine now. Um, I'm really close with both of them still, but they just, they still don't approve. <laughs> yeah. They'd <laughs> rather really you know be a doing. lawyer. Yeah. 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 At least you don't have to lie about it. Exactly. I just now like, even cause my dad just helped me move here. I moved here not long ago and he like set up my ring light and everything for me. <laughs> so I was like, all right, we're in. That's so funny. So, you know, when your dad's like, where did you get this idea? Like, where did you get that idea? I had actually another friend from my law school do it. And I was like, okay, she's doing it. And we're in the same, like, you know, graduating class. And I knew other friends that weren't lawyers doing it too. But because she was, I was like, okay, we're kind of in this together now. Like there's two of us. Mm -hmm. Oh, and she ended up stopping because she didn't like it. But that was kind of what gave me that push forward is that she decided to do it. I also have an OnlyFans, FYI. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that in a second. But how did you decide what your boundaries were? I just was like, whatever I'm comfortable doing, I'll do. If I'm uncomfortable doing it, I won't do it. And that was kind of where I established those boundaries. Now I was trying, like a lot of it to me at first, I was like, this is really cringy. Like, I don't like this, but other people like it. So if I'm just, if I just feel like it's cringy, that's okay. Like if people are enjoying it, they're enjoying it. But anything that makes me uncomfortable, I'm really good at being like, nah, you know, that's, that's okay. And that's, I think part of the reason I felt like I was able to do that is because I knew I had other options. If I don't want to do this. And I had, you know, my, for a long time, I was still doing my law job. So it didn't feel like I did it out of necessity. And that Mm -hmm. gave me the ability to be like, "Mm -mm, I'm I'm not going to do this. Do you shoot scenes with other people? Do you do mostly solo stuff? Like what is on your page? So I was doing solo stuff up until this February. So this February was the first time that I had a partner on with me. And honestly, the reason for that is just like, I wasn't having sex. I was like, right. <laughs> home all the time. I uh, don't like to have a lot of casual sex. This is a personal, like, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. There's no moral mm-hmm. on my end, but I just wasn't doing it. And I, again, I didn't want to do something just for only fans because I felt like I had to, but the situation came about, we started recording. I was like, Oh, can I put this on my only fans? And he's like, yeah. And then I was like, okay. So it's funny. Cause for a long time, since I didn't have that, people are like, what is so special about this person? Like, I was like, honestly, nothing. It just happened when it happened. <laughs> nice. Okay. So how did you get it popping? I mean, it's a hustle on social yeah. media. So like, do you have any Reddit tips and like, where did you wind up finding your following? Reddit and Reddit is still like my largest platform. I have like almost a million followers there. Which Damn. Is- and I just started posting to as many subreddits as I could and just building up, building up, building up. Reddit is one of the only platforms, as I'm sure you know, that allows you to post nude content and promote your OnlyFans, maybe not in specific subreddits, but overall on the platform. So that was something that was really comfortable for me. I'm not good at taking like Instagrammable, aesthetically pleasing pictures, but like just taking a picture of like my body and posting, I was like, I can do this. It didn't seem like I needed like all this tech knowledge and like super beautiful background and whatever. So because of that, it was really easy for me to get started on that platform. There was also the, I was scared to even go on other platforms at the time because I didn't want, you know, when I was working at the firm for somebody to stumble upon it. Whereas on Reddit, you kind of have to be looking like you have to Mm -hmm. be specific, not safe for work Reddit to come across it. So it made me feel like I was still being a little bit underground with it. And to this day, it's still like my favorite platform in general and the best platform to promote on for me. So the culture's changed, right? I think a little bit 
and especially with how many people did OnlyFans, you know, over the past couple of years, do you think, you know, let's say in a few years, you're like, oh, I don't want to do OnlyFans anymore. I do want to, you know, make use of my law degree. Do you think that you will encounter issues with a civilian job again? Depends. So I would say the legal profession is still fairly conservative, but it is changing. And the kind of firms that I think wouldn't hire me because of this are firms that I don't want to be at anyway. Mm -hmm. But a lot of even amongst lawyers, I actually did a podcast with some Texas attorneys the other day. And they're like, the reason we found you is because you were posted on the Texas attorney, like Facebook page in the comments, <laughs> overwhelmingly positive. So the culture is shifting. If I did use my law degree in the future, I would want it to be in the capacity in which I am advocating for sex workers, being able to help them with some of the issues that I've even personally encountered. And to be somebody that's like, I know what you're going through. I've been there too. Let me help you. And I actually have a lot of my friends from law school. They're like, yeah, we'd be down to do something like that too. So we'll see down the road, but that is what I would want to use my degree for is advocating. Cause I, I went from being in like one of the most respected professions in society to being in one of the least respected professions in society. So seeing that shift in the stigma and the discrimination that this marginalized community faces, it made me be like, yeah, I, I want to help. Has it changed your own ideas about sex work? No, I've always been pretty, I thought sex work was great. I never understood why people had an issue with it. I still, it shocks me that it's that, you know, some forms of sex work are illegal. Like to me, I've always been all for it. So it hasn't changed my perception at all in that way. Okay. Let's talk about you're in the top 0.1%. Is that right? 0.03 right now. 0 0.03. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's incredibly high. You're at the top of your OnlyFans game. I was very excited because I'm in the top 3.5% right now, but I, I also love it. <laughs> and I would love <laughs> to like go a little bit higher. So like, let's say you've got your system pretty much worked out. You're like me, you know, you're making some money on it. How do you take it to the next level? What are your tips? We talked about Reddit, but yeah, Reddit else? is like my bread and butter. But I think the more that you show your personality online, I mean, look, like some of the, the top OnlyFans girls are like Twitch streamers and they, you know, they're social media personalities in other capacities. So I will say like recently when I started like doing discussions on Twitch or talking on YouTube, which I started not long ago. A lot of people, even that had found me in other ways, like I get messages like, yeah, I found you on Reddit a while ago, but it was seeing you talk and seeing your personality that made me subscribe to you. So I feel like since I started being more vocal about my story, who I am, what I believe in, which I started after I left my law firm, that has helped catapult me to where I am. And I also think Keeping subscribers is also really important mm -hmm. and do that by trying to be as authentic as possible. I don't have an agency go in and just like spam everybody and like the bots. I don't do any of that. And I, and, and only fan subscribers are real people. They realize when it's happening and when it's not. So I've been able to keep a lot of my fans from the beginning because they're like, you're one of the only pages I keep my renew on because I feel like I'm getting an authentic experience. So those are tips that I, I feel like have really helped me. Yeah. Talk about that strategy on Twitch and if you have any for the other platforms, but I heard you talk about like, you know, you have kind of like a straight conversation on Twitch and then you take them on, over to your live stream, things like nitty gritty, things like that, I think are really smart. And if you can kind of share your strategy. Yeah. So uh, what I used to do is also on, do that on TikTok. Like I'd go live and then I'd be like, okay, but you know, with TikTok, you have to be very careful because I mean, they have their rule, their community guidelines are absurd. Um, same with Instagram. But I think for a lot of people when they like, they like to have, they're attracted to me partially because I'm a lawyer and I'm still really nerdy and I'm intellectually curious. So I have a lot of my fan base are other lawyers, other people in corporate positions. And so they hear me talk and I'm like, all right, we're going to talk like on a regular topic. And then we're going to go and, you know, you guys can see me live in a different capacity. And that is attractive to a lot of people. I didn't expect it. I honestly did it because I was just like, I want to be intellectually challenged still just because I quit that job doesn't mean, cause you know, OnlyFans by default is not gonna, you know, it's not a lot of 
brain work in it. <laughs> I was like, how can I bring this to people? And how can I really share my message, which is that be an example of someone who like breaks stereotypes and live life on my own terms. And so that's what I did with Twitch because I, I, I knew like a lot of girls just play video. I don't know how to play video games. And I was like, at first I was like, okay, should I try to conform to what everyone else is doing? And I was like, no, just be yourself. This is what you like to do. Just do it. And I'm sure people are going to like that. And they have. How many people are in those Twitch rooms and how are you promoting that to? Are you on Twitter? Twitter's more sex work friendly. Yeah, typically. Twitter. Yeah, Twitter. I don't even promote my Twitter, but I don't even know how people find it. Honestly, <laughs> I do post it on Twitter. I post it on like all my socials. I'm going live here. And then some people go live there because they expect it to be like a sexy live. And then they realize it's not. But right in that live, I'm like, okay, guys, at you know, X time, I'm going to go live on my OnlyFans page. And so people, even people who watch like a replay or something, they realize now that that's what happens. So they're like, okay, let me subscribe to that. Smart as well. So, yeah. I feel like it's a good, good strategy in general to let people know because a lot of people don't even know you can go live on OnlyFans. They don't really, if they're not subscribers, they have no idea what the platform consists of. And so when they're like, oh, she can go live on there and she can probably be naked. Okay. Let me go check that out. <laughs> so let's talk about the money. I mean, at, when you're at the top like that, can you give us a ballpark? How are you living? Uh, it is. I am making six figures a month off there now. Damn. And I even before, because I also run like a snap premium. So a lot of my Reddit people, they don't, a lot of people don't want to go through OnlyFans, but I'm like, Hey, you can join this like special snap story for just like, you know, 12 bucks and they just pay through cash app or whatever. So I was making money in that way too. And then what I do on OnlyFans is every other night I drop like the special, like the PPV content. So I have a day of promoting where like I post on Reddit and then every other day I do that. And then I drop the PPV. So I constantly have cash flow coming in either from an influx of new subscribers or from the sales of the video. Very smart. Okay. I feel like I'm underutilizing PPV. Yeah, you probably are because a lot of, I almost never post any of that, but it's very smart because when you do though, like a couple times I've done that, I've been like, Oh my God, I just got a whole yeah, bag. I think, I think <laughs> if, if you're trying to get yourself up to the next level, that's a good way. And then I offer like bundle deals. So it's like this much for one, if you buy two, three, five. And it's not like it's any extra work for me. Cause I already made those videos. Like, you right. know, you can sell the same video that you made like a year ago and you have new subscribers all the time that are like, Hey, can I get that video? And you're like, sure. So PPV is a really great way to keep people buying things because you already made it. It's not extra work for you. Yeah. And some people will just like want the cheap version or whatever, but yeah. some people do just like to buy more, like the ability to buy more of your stuff. It's kind of bizarre. <laughs> yeah. I look at it as my subscription price is almost like an entry fee. Mm -hmm. You can like buy extra things or get a custom. I don't do as many of those anymore because I don't have time, but as your page grows, you kind of have to evolve. Like I don't have a lot of time to do one-on-one -on -one chatting with people anymore because of the capacity that I'm at now, but I do have time to make a five minute video and then send it to everybody. And the people that want it are able to, to get it. And, but if you get more, it becomes cheaper and cheaper. So a lot of people do the bundle, which is great. Yeah. So on the fan side, what's your advice for how to be a good fan on OnlyFans? Uh, respect boundaries. Number one, I have like rules. Like if you message me, like, like, I don't know if they think we're just sitting there 24 seconds. <laughs> it's like, Hey, 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 if you do that, I just restrict you. You know, I want to keep my fans. I, I like my job. And I feel like a lot of OnlyFans girls think their fans are annoying. And I think part of that is because, well, you're not setting those boundaries with them and you're not getting rid of the ones that are annoying. If you look at OnlyFans, I want to make as much money as possible. And I don't care how you're not going to enjoy it. So there are people that are even willing to buy that just annoy me. So I'm like, no, you can't. And I'll restrict them. But how to be a good fan is to support. If you know that you're messaging someone and taking their time, tip them, follow them on other platforms, tip them on the live streams. You know, we, we want that connection with you just as much as you want that connection with us. Yeah. I've met some really lovely people, you know, when you uh yeah very protective of 
like the comments about me don't really bother me but when i see a comment made about only fan subscribers you know like they're simps they're this like th i get really upset at those because i'm like no they're actually really the vast vast majority are like like better people than i'm finding are in, <laughs> on our other platforms that don't subscribe to only fan and totally. i that the grammar and spelling and like sentence structure it's like once they're on only fans it's just like i'm there's the correct form of your the correct form of their it's not the case on tiktok and instagram necessarily <laughs> that's a hilarious observation okay well this has been awesome is there anything else you want to tell the privates about your experience on only fans or tips or anything you want to leave us with i do think that it's two way street and it, it's partly the fans responsibility to make sure they're creating. I think we have a really great opportunity here with only fans and we can really change the game. And I also think it's also the creator's responsibility to make sure you're running your page ethically and you are being as authentic as you can. And I also want to put out there if there are any other creators, because I know these agencies come in or these management companies come in and you guys can run into problems. You guys have these contracts that have them aren't even enforceable. But if you ever want to sign something or you ever want help getting out of a situation that you think you're stuck in, since I am an attorney, I may be able to help you with that. So you can reach out to me anytime free of charge. I'll look at your contract. I'll help you if I can. Oh, that's so nice. Awesome. Well, thank you, Jasmine. Can you give us your handles and tell us where to find you? If you just go to Jasmine Jafar, which is J-A-Z-M-E-N-J-A-F-A-R.com, it'll have all of my links to my all my socials, including my OnlyFans. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much.